As a professional maker, I've picked 12 of my favorite tools, and I'm not going to waste your time. Here they are. I chose these tools because they're not as popular, but I find myself using them nearly every time I'm in the shop. I've had a lot of requests from makers to do tool recommendations, and there's a lot of thought that went into this list. So I'm gonna give you a brief breakdown of each tool and why I picked it. If you know somebody that could benefit from this list, don't be afraid to share this video. I didn't pick tools like this because they're more well-known. And I also didn't pick anything over 40 bucks. Instead, I concentrated on tools that I thought you would be less likely to already own, but you would also end up using all the time, just like I do. And if you're interested in any of these tools, I put an Amazon affiliate store link in the description. I have all the tools listed there from this video, and if you use that, the tools don't cost anymore, saves you time searching for them, and it helps out my channel by giving me a small commission. The first tool on this list is a perfect example of an uncommon tool that I use all the time and I think every maker should have. It's an airbrush. I was afraid to get one of these for a long time because people said you had to get an expensive one and they're difficult to use, but those are not true. This is inexpensive, it works great, and it's not that hard to use. This set was right around 30 bucks. It came with the airbrush with a filter on it, a quick disconnect coupler, a quick disconnect, a hose, two extra size needles, two extra size nozzles, the wrench to change them out, so you get 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and 0.5. You might be thinking that a $30 airbrush could not possibly be that good compared to what they normally cost, which is, from what I've seen, mostly $100 to $200. But I have a $100 plus dollar airbrush, and I can't really tell a difference. Let's say you have something you want to paint, and you want it to be accurate, and you want a nice thin layer, or you don't want to have to worry about runs, and you're not good at spray paint, or you can't spray it because it's craft paint, or it's some other weird kind of paint. As long as you know what solvent to use to thin these paints down, you can spray it. And this one is double action. You push down for the air to come out, and then you pull back, and the further you pull back, the more paint comes out. To adjust the airflow, to adjust your pattern, you just twist that knob right there. This does require you having a compressor of some sort, but you can usually find a little one for really cheap. And I wish I had gotten one of these years ago. This is one of the best, least expensive tools I've ever bought. And I feel like hardly anyone owns these and nearly everyone should. Needle files. A lot of people don't like to file stuff, but needle files come in incredibly handy. But these are garbage. These are not. This is a set of fantastic needle files that I like so much, I bought two of them. This set is made by Mercer. It was made in India, not China, like these. That's the trash can, by the way. These have wonderful cuts on them. They go the whole way around. They're on the edges. They work on a number of things. About the only thing that you can't cut with a file is hardened steel. But these work really well for 3D prints, especially because on 3D prints, if you use sandpaper to try to clean up a print, you end up melting the plastic if you use a power tool or if you sand too fast by hand. But because these are cutting and removing the material, they work awesome for that. You wouldn't think needle files would be that commonly used, but I reach for this little pack more often than I ever thought that I would. And the reason I'm recommending these is because they're like 30, 40 bucks somewhere in there. And a lot of other really good file sets are like 150 or 200. And then all of the other files that are like $10 come out of China and they're garbage. They barely even work on aluminum. This is the kind you want. The next tool, which is one of my absolute favorites, comes with a safety statement before I tell you about it. If you get needles that are sharp, make sure the first thing that you do is you clip the tip off of the needle so that it's safe and it can't hurt you. Syringes are a wonderful tool that come in different variations and sizes. And with the tips put on, they become precision devices for applying all sorts of stuff. Super glue, epoxy, paint, oil, they're indispensable in certain circumstances. You can order syringes with tips that already have blunted ends. If you don't, make sure you clip them, please. I feel like these have more control than the little applicator bottles that have a similar tip, where it's a tiny little tube. I haven't found a use for it yet, but I will. <laughs> there are certain jobs that you need to do that you cannot accomplish unless you have these. I keep a variety of them all the time and they're surprisingly inexpensive. <laughs> this is a scribe. You can use it for poking holes in things and pulling on stuff, but its main purpose is to scratch lines. 
and because it has such fine points on it, you can get incredibly accurate lines with this on materials that normally you wouldn't be able to mark with certain things like a pencil or a pen or even sometimes a marker. And when you scribe that line, the mark doesn't come off. I love this style of scribe because if you have a tight area, you can go inside of it and scribe marks and you have a straight point on the end. I like the way they feel. There's a bunch of other ones out there that have interchangeable tips, but I just buy multiples because these are really inexpensive and they are super useful. I highly recommend these. This is a heat gun. It blows out really hot air, not like a hairdryer, far hotter than that. But unlike a blowtorch, this won't catch stuff on fire unless you want it to. I use this for all sorts of stuff to melt things, reform certain plastics, dry paint faster, stay warm on a cold day. And at only $9 from Harbor Freight, this thing is definitely worth it. This has lasted me a really long time. I had one die, but that's because I dropped it a bunch. But for nine bucks, if you're a maker and you don't have a heat gun, you don't have an excuse. This is super glue activator or accelerator. It makes super glue cure really fast from a couple minutes down to a couple seconds. Let me show you how well this works. These two pieces of foam have super glue on them. I'm gonna treat one of these two pieces with the activator. Doesn't take much. Eh. With activator. Basically cured. Without activator, not cured. If you've ever used super glue and you didn't use this, once you try this, you'll be kicking yourself that you didn't do it sooner. This is a game changer when it comes to super glue. These disposable blade knives are great, but some materials make the blades dull very quickly. You can bring them back to life though with fine diamond hones. With a dull blade, it takes more effort and can leave a ragged cut, especially after you've used it for a while. All it takes is a couple seconds on each side. The difference is pretty unbelievable. And even at 50 cents a piece at Harbor Freight, you can save a lot of money by making these things last like 10 times as long. These are flush cutters. These are diagonal cutters or side cutters. They're not the same. I'll show you why. Both of these tools have bevels on the front side. The difference is on the back of these cutters, there are grooves on this side too to create the sharp cutting edge. Flush cutters are only beveled on the front, meaning that when you cut something, you can cut flush or right up against. I use these a lot. Anytime I need an accurate cut or I'm in a tight space trying to make a cut, these are awesome. They're specifically made to make a flush cut up against something, especially for wires. I use these mostly to clean up 3D prints and believe it or not, I use them as fingernail clippers all the time. I got a two pack of these and now I wish that I had gotten the five pack because I like this specific pair so much that I find uses for them everywhere. This is a pin vise, a handheld screwdriver that you can put very tiny drill bits in. If you have a pin vise, you can get a set of wire gauge drill bits that you can drill holes for something as small as a fiber optic strand but it also gives you incredible control because you can swap out the ferrules inside to make it hold all different gauges. And this one has four with two hidden in the back. You might think I already have a drill, so there's no reason for me to get a pin vise, but your drill probably can't hold those tiny drill bits. And you're going to make way more accurate holes when you drill with your hand with a pin vise. These are great for precise drill work. You might think a giant roll of paper like this would be expensive, but they're right around 10 bucks at hardware stores and they work great for making a nice clean surface to work on. You can make a dirty surface clean or you can make your cleanup from making a mess very easy by removing the paper. I love having this paper around. I got it to mask stuff off when I paid in my truck and it lived in my rafters for a long time. When I finally got it down and started using it, I used it all the time. Highly recommend getting a huge roll of paper like this if you don't have one already. When I got this pick set with handles, I had no idea how much I would use these. I didn't think it would be that much and I used them all the time. So much that I got another set. These high quality aluminum handled Forney picks are amazing. They are my favorite. But it's also very useful to have a bunch of different shapes and dental picks are cheap. Picks are great for pulling off O-rings, the common stuff, but anytime you need to move anything small or detailed into or out of a tight space, picks are fantastic. Dividers, extremely handy. You can tell which ones get used the most. They're a little bit rustier. You can use these to get measurements from inside something that you can't use calipers on, and then you can use calipers or a ruler on that to get your measurement. Same thing for this for the outside. 
get around something that you can't with another measuring device. All of them you can mark metal with, especially these. These are great to use as a compass. You can easily mark metal, get corner radiuses, or make whole circles. They also do really well at marking foam. All three of these are a complementary tool to calipers. You can match up your measurement and follow edges. And the benefit of these is the same as a scribe. The mark doesn't wipe off. Here's some tools that didn't make the cut for the list because I either don't use them as frequently as the main tools, or I feel like they're more common and people are more likely to have them. Here's the honorable mentions. burns o -Matic TS-8000. Propane torches are common, but the TS-8000 is a swirl tip that burns hotter and has a bigger flame than most of them. This thing is awesome. It always surprises me when somebody doesn't have duct tape, but it's not surprising when somebody doesn't have T-Rex brute force duct tape. This is intensely strong. Project Farm towed a tractor with it. It's not cheap, but it can accomplish things that duct tape and a lot of other tools can't. This stuff's amazing. Calipers are common, but having a cheap set that you're not afraid to mess up is incredibly useful. You can scribe with them, you can measure with them, and when they stop measuring, you can at least use them to compare sizes. I think combo squares are pretty common, but they do have a lot of uses, and I find myself reaching for this all the time. Not only do you get a nice metal ruler, but you also get a level, and a lot of people don't know that in the end of it, there's a hidden scribe. You can always just yank the scribe out of the end of it and score your line. Deburring tools are very useful when they're needed. I don't use this that much, but when I do, it can save a huge amount of time versus filing off a burr from making a cut in metal. This takes seconds instead of minutes. Never underestimate the benefit of being able to see stuff really close up. Magnifying glasses can help out in all sorts of little detail work situations where you need to see stuff very clearly that's very, very small. I don't even know what the proper name is for these squirt bottles, but I got this one first. I don't recommend it. They fell apart. This is a better style with the hose that goes the whole way down. They are definitely worth the money. I use them far more than I thought I would. Quality Single Flute Step Bit. This one's Irwin brand. This is extremely useful, especially on plexiglass, because if you're using something that has two flutes, it tends to break it, but this will take one chip as it goes around and it doesn't shatter your thin material and it won't tear out if you're using it on metal. Wood burners are cheap and usually they come with a bunch of different tips for doing art on wood, but they're incredibly useful for making holes in plastic or cutting plastic and a number of other things and then you don't mess up your nice soldering iron. Feel free to let me know what you thought of my choices or what you would have picked. And if you're already a fan, don't forget that my shirts are for sale right now on Bonfire. There's a link in the description. I don't sell these often, and there's not much time left. So if you want to get one, now's the time. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.